What if one zone on your sprinkler system isn't coming on or isn't shutting off, but the rest of your system's working just fine? It could be your valve, it could be your controller, or it could be your wiring. How do you tell which? Today, we're going to use a voltmeter to troubleshoot your malfunctioning zone. Dwayne Smith here, your sprinkler warehouse product specialist. Let's figure out what's wrong with that zone. troubleshoot some of the electrical components, you're going to need either a multimeter, also called a voltmeter, or a solenoid activator chatterer. For this video, we'll be using the voltmeter. We have an almost identical video to this one where we go through the same process using a Pro 50 activator chatterer. If you have an activator chatterer, you should check out that video instead of this one. So let's start troubleshooting. Problem one, a zone won't stop running. That kind of issue is something that would probably not be caused by a controller. It's nearly certain that's a valve issue. Let's talk about what that looks like. If your zone should not be on, but the sprinklers in that zone are on or they're sort of on, by that I mean maybe you've got water dribbling from the top of several heads or a few heads are popping up and not just for a few minutes after the zone shuts off, it's happening continuously. Then the valve for that zone is not closing all the way. So in that case, find and replace the valve. Problem two, one zone isn't coming on all the way. That may look like several heads not popping up. Perhaps none of them are, but there's water seeping from the top of some of the heads. Then most likely your valve isn't opening all the way. You probably need to find and replace that valve. Problem three, one zone won't come on at all. This is the most difficult problem to diagnose. I have seen one case where a customer's module was not seated properly and there was an error code on the front of the controller. If you have a modular controller, make sure that the module is inserted properly and locked into place. Also, make sure it's not a programming error. Go through the program to determine that the zone is scheduled to run and for how long. You can run a manual cycle and skip ahead to that zone. Most controllers will have some sort of indicator on the screen to show that a zone should be on. If the controller is showing that the zone should be running but the sprinklers in that zone are not coming on at all, this could be a problem with the controller itself, the wiring between the controller and the valve or the solenoid on the valve. You're going to have to do some electrical troubleshooting. Let's talk briefly about what happens when a controller activates a valve. To activate a zone, the controller sends 24 volts of electricity through a lead wire to the solenoid on the valve. The solenoid is connected to both a lead wire and to the common wire. The common wire is also connected to all the valves in your system and heads back to the controller. That completes the circuit. When the solenoid is activated, it opens up the valve, sending water to the sprinklers. So let's check to see if the controller is working properly. Grab your multimeter, set it to test for around 24 volts AC. So we're testing for voltage here, not current. And by the way, testing the voltage only works on a regular system. It isn't gonna work on a battery operated controller. So set the controller to run the problem zone. And then you're going to place the black probe to the common terminal on your controller and then touch the red probe to the zone that's running. You should be getting a reading of somewhere between 20 and 30 volts. Here I'm getting around 25, so that's good. If your reading is really low, your controller's malfunctioning. Or if you have a modular controller, it could be that just the module is bad. You could try replacing that module. If you have another terminal that's not being used, you could switch the wire from the non-working zone to the available terminal and reprogram the controller to run that zone instead. Even if you can make that work, you will probably still have to replace the controller eventually. If you don't have another terminal available and assuming it's not a module issue, you need a new controller. It's a great time to upgrade. Uh, if you've got a basic model, you might wanna check out a smart controller that can change its programming based on local weather stations and you can program it with your smartphone. Check out the choices on sprinklerwarehouse.com. If however, your controller checks out fine, turn off the zone, turn the meter to measure resistance. You want to set it to the lowest resistance range. Touch the common terminal and the terminal of the zone you're testing. Touch or wrap the wires to the probes. The proper amount of resistance should fall somewhere between 20 and 60 ohms, depending on the brand and model of valve. 
If your valve has a DC latching solenoid, which is what you will have if your controller is battery operated, you should get a reading of around five ohms, depending on the brand. If you get a reading of one or OL, that is you're getting the exact same reading as when the probes aren't touching anything, or you're getting something below 20 ohms, then you've got a broken wire, an unconnected wire, or a bad solenoid. So let's narrow down the problem further. The next step will have to happen at the valve. You'll need to locate your valve box. At the valve box, unhook the wires on the solenoid. With your multimeter set to test resistance, touch or wrap the wires coming from the solenoid to your probes. Does not matter which wire goes to which probe. You should have a reading of between 20 to 60 ohms. If the reading falls outside of that, you've got a problem. Uh, most valve manufacturers make resistance specs available online. Once again, if you get a one or an OL reading, uh, or you get a reading close to zero, you've got a bad solenoid. Now, a solenoid by itself often costs nearly as much as a new valve, so you might as well change out the valve. The valve will eventually wear out, so if you get a new valve in place, you probably won't have to touch the valve box again for years. If your solenoid tested good, you probably have a wiring problem, so let's check that. Set the controller to run on the zone you're testing. Set your multimeter to check for around 24 volts AC. Touch or wrap the wires to the probes on your multimeter and look for a reading of somewhere between 20 and 30 volts. If you're getting a reading of somewhere around zero or pretty low, the problem is your wiring. If your wiring is bad, check if a wire connector has come off or see if there's a spot where the wire has become corroded at the wire connector. Hopefully that's your problem. If that doesn't fix it, you may need to run new wire. If you happen to have multi-strand wire coming into the valve and one of the strands in the multi-wire is not being used, just swap to an unused wire and swap the wire at the controller. Running wire is a lot of work, so if there's another valve nearby, maybe even a valve in the same valve box, uh, an option would be to purchase a doubler. A doubler will allow you to operate two valves using only one lead wire, so that's a possible solution. Hope this helps. Questions? Chat with one of our incredible customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really do know their stuff and they'll get you squared away. Get everything you need for that next landscape project from Sprinkler Warehouse, a proud member of the Heritage Landscape Supply Group. Your success is our heritage. Sprinkler Warehouse, America's most shop sprinkler store. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction.